Okay, so let's uh, let's do a little lighting for this guy and a little rendering so we can uh, get a decent, you know, render out of one of these bad boys. All right, so we've got our basic material set up and I'm just gonna throw in an Arnold light here. So wherever this Arnold light went to, I don't know. So we've got this Arnold light here. I'm just gonna pull this closer to our uh, to our prop. And we can just you can even align it. Or maybe just align it to it. And this isn't a light specifically for this. Is kind of like an HDR that will encompass the entire uh, scene. So uh, that's what this is for. So we're gonna go into our Arnold light. We're gonna make sure that it is it's a sky dome. Right, this is this is very important right here. We're gonna make sure that it's a sky dome that we have. And the first thing I always do is the exposure is always at eight. I'm gonna turn that to one. All right, and normalize energy is checked. That's okay for now. I'll see what it does here in a second. So, uh, first thing I kind of want to do now is I'm gonna hold down. A con Let's see. Let me turn on no board so you guys can see what I do. So I'm going to. I'm gonna hit Control and C, Control C, and that is gonna add a camera. It's added physical camera two to my scene. All right now that I've got physical camera two here. All right, um, let's see. Select this guy. Let's turn on Turbo Smart. I've got physical camera two here. Uh, I can do it. Let's do a test render. So before we do a test render, we're gonna go into our test settings, into our render setup right here. And I'm gonna make it HDTV. It's gonna default to 1920 by 1080. That is fine. Uh, then I'm going to go and make sure that my my render is turned into an Arnold renderer. So I'm gonna use Arnold as my rendering uh, system. And I'm gonna go into my system. I'm gonna turn on legacy support, and that allows me to use like the. Um, uh, scan line materials and active shade and stuff like that and, and it fixes a lot of the problems that you run into with active shade whenever you're uh, whenever you're modeling so um, yes yeah, so let's move on to the settings the settings are fine I think these are just base settings I don't you know I will start to come back and tweak them as I go but I need to just have like a decent uh, decent just a starter to see what our starting point is so now uh, we can hit render and see what we get. Okay. So here is what our uh, material is looking like. And it's really, really hot right now. So we're not getting... Um, not getting all the... All the nice detail out of the metal we should be getting, so... Okay, it's not bad. It's not bad. All right, so what we can do now is, I wanna change the lighting setup. So I'm gonna do kind of like a daytime setup for lighting, and I'll show you guys how to do that here just right now. So I'm gonna make a new view in our, uh, in our thing, environment. Let's do ENV for environment, and then I'm gonna do, um, I think it's a map, it's an Arnold map. It is environment, physical sky. And we can use this physical sky to drive our, uh, our sky dome here. So instead of using a color and intensity or intensity to power it, I'm gonna use a texture. And this texture is, this gonna, is gonna be this physical sky, and I can just drag Right, this node from there, and I can drop it into our map uh, slot. And I'm going to make it an instance so that every time I make a change in here, it affects uh, the light or the, the setup in here. So now, if I just do a base uh, render for you guys, you guys will see uh, what I'm talking about. So automatically, right, we're already getting a much better, much more realistic uh, lighting setup going. Right, because what it's doing is it's it's kind of mimicking uh, uh, a sky, 
a sky dome set up. So it's got like a uh, sun and a sky, and based on the sun's position, it's gonna light uh, the the object uh, in different ways. So right now, um, our sun position is probably like at a forty five degree angle based on where the lighting is coming from. It's like it's lit up like right here. So, and maybe right here. So maybe the sun is like right in this area. Like if I was pointing on, if I was starting a line, it'd be coming from right there. But in reality, I want my sun to be like right here. I want my sun to be right over the top of it. So it's nice and well illuminated. And I can do that uh, by going into my material editor right here, uh, going into my physical sky settings and in the elevation right now it's at 45 degrees. So like I, you know, at 45 degree angle, but now I want to make it 90. So I'm just going to do 90. And then uh, now if I render it, you'll notice that uh, the sun is directly above and it's lighting it uh, from, from the top. Okay. So now this is the, this is when it starts to get fun uh, in in rendering and stuff because now that we've got a basic kind of HDR setup this is kind of like an overall lighting right this is the everywhere lighting and then the, then you'll start to add your uh, your three-point setup where uh, you can add a key a fill and then a rim light all right so this is kind of uh, this is kind of our overall fill so now we want to add a key light and a rim light all right so now the next thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna create another Arnold light. Right here, let's go P. And then let's move this light right here. I'm gonna actually align it to the car. Again, this time I actually want it to be part of the car. So I'm gonna go to C, I'm gonna go to my second camera right here. And then I'm gonna make sure that this light is actually a quad. All right, let's go here. So make sure this is a quad, and I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this light so that it acts like that. All right, when I say three-point light setup, let me show you a three-point light setup. So this is the basic three-point lighting setup. It's something that's used in photography quite often. And the idea is that uh, you have uh, a key, a fill, and a backlight based on, you know, if this is your object, All right? This is the, you know, so if this is your camera, you want a key light, a fill light, and then a backlight. So essentially, right, this is this is a three-point lighting setup. So boom, boom, boom. So that's gonna be, you know, kind of what I imitate. So and I never really I, I kind of carve and, and model with the lighting as well. So I'll show you what that means. So um let's go into our setting. Let me show you guys something cool about uh rendering. So the cool thing is if I turn on my active shade, what that does is it's gonna continuously render for me over time. And I'm gonna do it at 1280 just so it does, um, it does a better job. Let me do, let's do active shade. Cancel this. And then let's do, where's active shade? Active shade. So Active Shade continuously renders over time. So if if I add anything to it, if I you know anything I do to it, and I'm gonna lock, um, I'm gonna lock this. Oop. Oh, it's doing scan line. 
Let's do Arnold. Render. All right. So now it's going to continuously render no matter what we, we do to this. So let's do Alt W and I'm going to I'm going to lock this so that no matter what I do, I can now start to add. All right. So when I talk about carving and, and sculpting with light, here's what I mean. So now I'm going to go into my light right here. And instead of using this map, I'm going to use color. And then I'm going to select a color, maybe something warm, All right? Something warmer, like a yellowish red, something warm. I do. I like to do like I like the, the contrast of warm versus cool a lot. So I usually like to, you know, um, to use uh, that that idea whenever I'm lighting my my subjects. And as, as you can see, as I turn on, turn up the, the exposure and the, uh, the intensity, right, we're getting more of that yellow in there. Getting more of that yellow. Right. As you can see, we're getting more of that yellow in there. We're getting more and more of it. I'm, I'm pouring more of that. And then I'm just turning on the exposure for that. All right, so I, I've got my warm over there. And, you know, the next thing I'll do is I'll just duplicate it. I can make it a uh, copy because if I make it an instance, it's just going to copy all the settings from the other one. So I'm going to move this one. This will be my, uh, my key light, right? This is my key light. right here and I might want to make that cool right and I'll usually do a cooler a cooler color here All right so now we're getting this warm cool contrast right the next thing we're missing is kind of like this backlight or a rim light so uh, we can then shift drag this guy I'm gonna shift drag one more time make it a copy Hit E, and then you guys will see what it does, what that rim light does. You see how now we're getting a nice kind of rim to it. So if you look what I'm doing here, let's do Alt W. So, so now we're going to get kind of like a nice rim, and I usually you want to kind of turn it a little bit over here like that and then so that you're going to get and you can see that we're now going to get that rim right that's that's what that's doing All right here let's bring it a little closer in All right, and that's our Turn it down a little bit. All right, because you see we're starting to get some of that in the on the edges of the seats and stuff. There we go. Let's rotate this this way. Yeah, 
And like a, you know, like as you guys, as you can see, like it's just a lot of back and forth when it comes to like lighting things and getting things to look good. It's just you know, I'm not gonna let the computer determine what looks. Like. I'm gonna figure. I'm you know, you know, let it do a little render, see what it looks like. I'm you know, because I like that I'm getting this rim right here. Right. And I like that. And what I might do is, let's see. Just so you guys can see the light. You can see how it's affecting the the model right so I'm carving with it I'm 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 using the light as you know kind of like a paintbrush itself to say okay now that red now this red separates right it separates these objects from each other it separates these shapes from each other you can tell that this is a flat surface and then this transitions into a smoother surface right this is the idea behind all of what I'm trying to show you guys is you know, the, the modeling is only part of it. The modeling is only part of it. The finishing, right? This this part is another aspect. This is, you know, what I, I would want you guys to get to, right? Getting to the point where you can start to, you know, finish these. And it's not the most ridiculous, uh, you know, things to learn to do, right? It's something that if you guys just put, you know, put a little time into it, you will start to kind of, you know, understand what's going on under the hood and, and, and different things like that and i'm just adding this extra light because i kind of like what it's doing i like the the fact that it's going to separate this guy from me uh for me so i might make it a, kind of a cooler color right like i you know i i don't know what's going on but it feels like it's in like like an arcade or something or something cool is going on and we're getting all of these you know different different colors that's kind of highlighting and helping me right sell this as something that's realistic right it's it's helping me in a, in a lot of different ways because now this leather doesn't have to rely on just the texture alone it can the lighting can help it the lighting can help sell uh sell what i'm uh what i'm modeling over here so yeah this is uh this is pretty cool um yeah let's see what else would i do now let's let's now see um Let's see if we can do a bigger render and see what that looks like. All right. So before we do the bigger render, I want to show you guys something. Uh, if I hit eight on my keyboard, it's going to bring up, um, it's going to bring up my, my environment and effects uh, tool. And this is pretty cool because I can really like, I can change the background so I can see how the background is affecting our uh, our image, right? And because you know, darker kind of makes you focus a little more on it, and lighter. In in some cases, the the background can affect your lighting as well. You know, so you need to be careful with that. Or you can use a map as well. You can use an environment map but I don't use that. So I'm not using any sort of exposure control right now, and I wouldn't recommend you guys do that as well. I think I, you know, um, these, this is if you kind of understand uh, cameras a little more, uh, I would definitely come back and show you guys this, um, you know, but I think for starters, I think you guys shouldn't worry about the exposure control uh, right now. Focus on just HDR rendering, HDR, uh, surfaces and, and, and different things like that instead of um, you know uh, logarithmic uh, exposure controls or physical exposure control because they, these are these are all have to do with real world physical uh, cameras and you'd have to have you know you don't have to but you can you learn about cameras and I think you will be able to better use uh, these exposure control settings so and I never really you know because you can render a preview with this and 
I, I never really trust what I see here. It's usually, you know, uh, kind of off, you know, I, and it with the time that I would take to render a preview in here, right, I can already do an active shade view in here that's already going to be better and give me a better representation of what my lighting is going to look like. So uh, that's my little two cents on using this little render view here. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that in here you can uh, uh, definitely, you know, change the background color so you guys can have a better background uh, for that. So let's change it from active shade. We're going to close down this active shade now that we have our, um, now that we have our model and stuff done. We're going to just fire off a, a good render. So let's just boop and then just like that. Oh, it's so tiny. So right now we need to go into our, our camera view. And then um, let's just fire off a render. Okay, so here's our render, but it's still a little fuzzy. Like if we zoom in here, we can still see a lot of noise. Uh, and you know, I try to show you guys how to uh, fix this noise in different ways. There's a lot of you know different ways that you're getting this noise, and this is something I talk about quite often. Uh, and the problem that I, that I see a lot of students run into is that. Um, Whenever they, they see noise in their render, um, they don't know how to fix it. They don't know what it's attributed to. So they're really just kind of taking a stab in the dark, right? Like they're just really, really taking a, a stab in the dark. And they don't know really what's going on. So let's, see. let's turn this back to production mode. Cancel this. I don't know why it's still in this weird mood preset. Okay. All right, so I just need to load it. That's so weird. This is 2021, and I'm I'm still trying to get used to it. I guess production mode. Where's Arnold? Preset. I guess so. Okay, so. So let's go back to our system, make sure we have our legacy support. Um, and yeah, here we go. Let's get back to the noise in the, the render. All right, so I know that the the noise is coming from the specular reflections, right? If we look at our, our last render, oh, let's look at our new render. All right, our last render right here, let's actually Cancel this. Let's hit eight on the keyboard. Let's just turn this black. Okay. No render. Okay. So uh, if I if I'm looking at the noise, a lot of it's inside of these uh, these reflections and the diffuse. So I've got some in the shadows, but I, there's no way I can know that 
unless um, I render out some of these as individual passes. So uh, let's let's add some ALVs and uh, and see if these these guys can help us uh, understand better what's going on under the hood. All right. So we're gonna go to these uh, AOVs. So these guys are called arbitrary output variables. So is this Okay, let's take a look. All right, so they've got a new system for adding these. So I'm just going to take a look at uh, what I want to look at. So the main ones I really want to add are, um, let's do the diffuse albedo. All right. And then we're going to do the specular albedo as well. And then uh, there's no subsurface scattering, which refers to like skin or wax, things that are translucent. Um, and let's see, specular direct, specular indirect. And then... Um, Shadow. Let's do shadows as well, just so I can see if uh, if it's the shadows. So let's do a render on those. And this is going to render out all those outputs as well for us. Should have added the lighting. Okay. Okay, so here are our AOV maps. So it's sent them to this link right here. So now let's take a look at them. See if we can see them here. Just a second, it's gonna try to open it up for me. Okay, so this is the diffuse map right here. So this is how I would advise you guys to troubleshoot anytime you've got noise in your render. All right, I'm gonna go the slow, slow about kind of way of showing you guys just so you guys uh, get the message. So if I zoom in, I can see that in my diffuse, there's actually very little to no noise in here, right? It's very little to no noise in my diffuse. All right, so we're gonna open up all of these guys. Open these guys up. All right, so and they render out as EXRs, which is pretty cool. Okay, so nothing there. So here is our specular. So I can tell instantly that 
in our um I can tell where all my noise is uh, is coming from. So all right, so now let's zoom in to see where all my noise is coming from. All right, so I'm getting some noise. So this is the actual light. Like this is what all of those lights are doing to the model. This is just all of the lights. And I'm not getting a lot of noise. There's a little bit right here, a little spillover from uh, the lighting. So this is like the direct uh, lighting from the, the lights themselves, the actual lights in the world. So there's not a lot of noise in there, right? There's not, you know, like if you can see right here, there's a little bit right here, but it's something that... Um, it's not the main cause. That's not the main cause. The main cause, right? What's what's happening is these specular reflections that we have, right? If you look here in our uh, reflections right here, we've got quite a bit of noise in all of these. In uh, for the for the metals, right? Especially that metal, right? It's like the noisiest. The noisiest part of this entire thing so if I'm gonna put samples anywhere right I would probably start with this as the number one place to put my samples right and this is you know what this is oh this is the shadow I think it's the shadow or is this the shadow yeah, that, I think this is the sh that other one was the shadow so this is our diffuse has nothing so I don't need to put the samples in the diffuse because that would be a waste. I can put it in the specular and the, the direct and the indirect lighting. All right? So I, I at the last place I'll add samples to my lights. All right? That'll be the last place I'll add samples to. But if I add samples, I'll, you know, let me just show you where I would add my samples to, just so you guys can see. So you see all this noise, all of that, all of those different pieces combine to give us this noise we're seeing. Right, the idea is that we don't want any noise in our image, and to attack this the best way that we can, right, we need to figure out where that's coming from and then attack that. So right now, right, if I add uh, three, just three to my specular, it's gonna take care of uh, some of a lot of that noise. So let's go here. So it should take care of a lot of the noise that's in here. Just adding one more sample in here. Let's give it a moment while it renders. The last frame took 22 seconds, so about a 20 second render time. That's actually kind of bad, but I mean, especially since this image is like 1920 by 1080. Okay, looks like our render got worse. Three, two, so that's 90. Okay, let's actually do four, two. Oh, actually, oh.
How does it look good and then go back to bad? Now that is a question. Okay. So let's troubleshoot this. Set this to two and one again. All right, now I'm gonna let's duplicate this clone rendered window. We're gonna clone this guy, so we have a copy right here. And we're gonna render this out at two one and see what happens. Because already that looks better than that. So let's take a look. Let's take a look, see. Okay. So there's something affecting our render. Go to my settings. Let's turn off my AOVs. That was the last thing I did before I started doing this. So now let's run to this. Let's see if the AOV manager was what was. Uh, degrading our stuff and it looks like that's exactly what it was uh, the AOV manager was on so it was still rendering all those weird passes and that's where our noise was coming from all right so this is 2 1 right this is the noise at the setting being 2 1 in the specular so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually Gonna increase this to three and two. Ray depth of two. And then now let's clone this window. So here is our quality right now, and let's just see how much better it gets with just one increment in the sample for the specularity. Let's see what we got. Okay. So not much difference in our specularities. I'm trying to look. Same section. It looks like it's got pretty much the same amount of noise not much not much difference so now <clears throat> yeah it's it's a lot better than this though that's for sure right it's why we can both agree that it's, it's a lot better than that so we're gonna remove this as our bar this is it at 2 1 so instead of doing it there well let's eliminate it at the lights so that at the very least our lights won't have this f noise in here. All right, let's, now let's go into these lights. All right, uh, so the lights have their own samples. So we're gonna do three samples instead of one there. And I think the one that was so let's go to our tools. Let's just open up our light lister. 
So if we open up our light lister, it's going to bring out this little dialogue for us. And uh, we're going to use samples. Let's refresh this. And then these are the quad lights. So I'm going to put <coughs> three samples on the quad lights. Just refresh it. Go back to our uh, render here. Let's make a clone just so we can see our before and after. And then let's render it. Hopefully, what I'm hoping for is that these little freckles go away and they, they, they would get reduced. And I, I think that's what's going to happen. It's based on the sample increase. Okay, yeah, so less uh, less noise here. It's less noise in the lighting, so that's okay. I can live with that. All right, what I'm starting to not like is this one now. So I know it's not in my diffuse and it's in my specularity, so I can go inside my material and change that. That's where I'm gonna, that's where I think I'm gonna go fix it. It's my material. So now our lighting is pretty much like just smooth it's not as noisy as this guy it's, you know it's still got some noise but it's not as noisy like you can see like the threshold between that guy and that guy so it's just right just less noise all right all right and you guys are probably like man this guy is going into like the light light like yes this is how deep you need to go to to really understand this stuff it's like to really get good renders and stuff out is like you need to go into why is my stuff noisy and the reason i'm i'm, I'm going this deep is because what i see students do is they'll arbitrarily just start cranking up those numbers and they'll just start cranking it up and they they're thinking why is my model not getting better why is my lighting taking forever to render Right? Why is it taking forever to render and it's not getting that much better? Well, it's because you're attacking the wrong parts, like you're doing the wrong thing to affect the noise. And if you don't understand why you're getting noise, well, you're going to just keep adding it to random places. And what they'll usually do is they'll just go into the camera AA samples and just turn up the anti-aliasing and be like, all right, well, it's going to it's going to get rid of and it, it will get you know rid of some of the noise but you're gonna just keep upping the render times for no reason when you can just you know i'm upping up three here here and there and i'm getting better results so i'm actually affecting the parts of it that need it and not just you know you unilaterally kind of just kind of putting a, a smash hammer on 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 my settings so uh yeah let's let's uh Let's take a look at these, these settings. All right, so it's not the transmission, it's volume indirect. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna do one here. So I think a lot of that issue was part of this indirect lighting that we had. It's like a lot of the, yeah. That's where a lot of this is coming from. Let's look at that manager again, just so. Our AOV manager. Specular indirect. So that was the shadow. Specular indirect. Specular direct. And then the specular albedo. So 
2 is the direct. So this is direct. Right there. Three is indirect. All right, just to show you guys. Indirect lighting. And that's the last one's the shadows. All right, so. Now that I know that that's the indirect, so this is indirect lighting, so this should affect it. So let's do four there, and then two here, and that should take care of the, all the noise we're getting in here. Four and two. Last render took 45 seconds, so. Looking at those light shapes. All right. So definitely less noise. Definitely less noise. Where these indirect lightings are, like where this indirect shadow is, there's definitely less noise in here. All right, so we're starting to get get that uh, get those nice get that get to that nice level. Man, right, we're still getting rendered right here, and I can crank those settings all the way up and get you know rid of it. But I mean, we're getting forty-five second renders out of something that already looks like this. So um, I'm not too mad at that. Not too mad at that. Right, the only other thing is, you know, I think our lighting is, is still still giving us quite a bit of noise right there. So let's uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's let's go back to our tools and then so let's open up our light lister again. And then I'm gonna do three as well for that. And then just up these guys to four. And it should make our lighting a whole lot better all around. Less noise. Okay. So now let's make a clone of this guy, which is our, it's our newest, and then let's render it. All right, this is uh, this is going pretty good. All right, and I like to, you guys to see the process and see uh, what goes on behind all this stuff and what I'm thinking when I'm rendering and I haven't even addressed like materials really but um, I think your your lighting can can definitely do a lot for you <clears throat> here we go look at that clean clean it's getting really clean moving a lot of noise a lot of noise is getting out of there
All right, so I mean, this uh, this red light, it's it's still giving us some noise right here. All right, we can see it right there. That's coming from that red light, so you know, still analyzing. And this yellow light is still giving us uh, still giving us some noise, so we might we might want to up the samples on that yellow because it's, it's, you can tell that it's a lot of that yellow light. So you just want to up those samples on those yellow lights and the red light, and I think you should be good. I think uh, we should be good. Uh, we don't really have a lot of you know surface noise from the specular anymore. I think we took care of that. Um, yeah, this is uh, pretty nice. So, yeah, this is how I would pretty much, you know, kind of light this uh, if I was gonna, if I was gonna light something like this. And this is just very minimum, very basic kind of setup that you can do. Um, you know, the model for me isn't really finished. I'm gonna do some more tweaks to the model, kind of finish it out, make sure that it's uh, it's nice and ready. Um, and then I'll do like a final like presentation render. So, uh, cause you know, even right now I still haven't even, um, I haven't gone in and done anything to the, uh, to the interior and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, it was a, it's a pretty fun project. Uh, it's still going. So this is just, you know, one of the one of the bigger pieces in there so it's always kind of fun to, to kind of knock these kind of guys out so uh i'll save this guy and post it as the as the image for the this part of the tutorial and um yeah i look forward to seeing you guys in the the next installment